The book Divide or Conquer shows how leaders and teams rise and fall on the strength of their relationships. Author Diana McLean Smith joins us to explain how to strengthen the relationships most critical to our success. Some relationships are strong enough to handle whatever pressures and conflicts come their way. Others break down quickly and completely at the first sign of trouble. After 25 years of observing and advising leaders and their teams, I've grown convinced that relationships have the power to create or destroy enormous amounts of human, social, and economic capital. In 1983, while Apple was growing like gangbusters, 27-year-old Steve Jobs recruited 44-year-old John Scully away from Pepsi to join Apple, having convinced everyone, including themselves, that they were the perfect match. Yet in just under two years, their relationship fell apart, sending Jobs into exile and the firm into economic decline for the next 12 years. What neither saw is that their actions, their threats and accusations, were provoking reactions in the other, say indignation or outrage, that led each of them to act in ways that intensified the other's reactions and reinforced their actions. Over time, patterns of interactions like these define the character of a relationship and make even the most irrational actions look downright reasonable, even inevitable, at least to the person acting. Jobs and Scully are hardly alone. Take Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld's embattled relationship with his top generals. Or the downfall of Carly Fiorina at the hands of the Hewlett Packard board. Or Michael Ovitz and Michael Eisner's $140 million breakup at Disney. Or the recent implosion of Bear Stearns, a firm so at war with itself it became its own casualty. In each of these cases, you see the exact same problem. The inability of leaders to build strong relationships with those most critical to their success. As soon as the going gets tough, market conditions worsen, competition gets stiffer, customers start to demand more, leaders get caught in patterns of interaction that lead their relationships to fail and their leadership to suffer. But then there are those partnerships that work. Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill during World War II. Jack Welch and Jeffrey Emelt at General Electric. Abraham Lincoln and his wartime cabinet. Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer at Microsoft. Despite personality differences, conflicting interests, divergent beliefs, and the most intense pressures, these relationships all grew stronger over time. Why the difference? Let's take a closer look. In failed relationships, people don't look at how their relationship works or fails to work. Instead, they keep waiting for the other person to change before changing themselves. Utterly convinced that only one or the other of them is to blame for their difficulties, they start to turn each other into caricatures, seeing each other as either mad, irrational, or bad, immoral, selfish, self-interested, this either-or perspective makes it much harder to resolve disagreements or to work through any difficulties people have with each other. In successful relationships, people give their relationships the exact same strategic attention they give their mission. And they make sure it's strong enough to weather whatever pressures they'll face. They understand that any high-stakes business problem is inherently frustrating, and that their different personalities, interests, beliefs will lead each of them to see things the other misses. When these leaders disagree, they look for the sense, not the nonsense, in what the other is saying. And when they get upset, well, they look at how they're both contributing to outcomes neither likes. This relational perspective, as I call it, makes it much easier to settle disagreements and to use conflict 
to strengthen relationships and invent solutions neither person alone could possibly imagine. While the either-or perspective brings out the worst in people, the relational perspective brings out the best. Roosevelt and Churchill's relationship bolstered their leadership, and it helped them win the war. In the heat of the moment, most people fall prey to the either-or perspective, and they get mad as hell. I know I do. The key isn't to avoid ever getting mad. The key is to develop the ability to shift perspective. My research suggests that those leaders who learn to reflect and reframe, first alone, then together, are able to help each other cool down when things get hot. By reflecting on what each person is doing to contribute to their difficulties, and by reframing those difficulties in relational terms, leaders gradually build what I call a relationship's cool system. That's the collective ability to cool down together so they can make better decisions and take more effective action. I hope you enjoy reading Divide or Conquer and you can use its tools to strengthen your most important relationships.